Hello and welcome everybody. You are looking at the Jack Nicholas Murfield by McGregor. And we're celebrating. We're having a special today where we're talking about a little tournament where the best golfers in the world come and putt around a little bit called the Masters. It's about an hour and a half, two hours away from where I live. And I'm excited about it. And then I'm excited about this club. In fact, I've been treating this leather grip here for about six months trying to get its tackiness back and it's nice and tacky now still a little hard but nice and tacky so we're going to turn back time a little bit we're going to look at some interesting golf club equipment and we're going to look back at some interesting situations players and a particular tournament so for starters the club this is made by mcgregor sadly no longer with us This club was out during the, do you remember the 50th anniversary of the Masters? Bobby Jones, back in 1936, started this Masters thing. And 50 years later, who was worthy to win the Masters? Only one person that you can think of, Taylor Swift. But you need to get your head on straight. She wasn't born yet. So seriously, who would have won the Masters in the 50th anniversary? Jack Nicholas, right? And what clubs were out by McGregor, rest in peace, at that time? These, okay? But this is not what he was playing. He modified this. This is called the Pro 81 Forging. And he modified this into a modified Pro 81 forging, <laughs> forging, whatever you want to call it, where it was more of a straight back, right? So Titleist now makes something that's very similar. Um, if you're looking for a curved, like for me personally, I love this curved back. It looks very organic, and I know some companies get kind of close, like Shrixon makes a beautiful Z-forged uh, iron set that has a nice curved shape to it. Uh, it's not chrome, it's kind of this, uh, I don't know how to describe it, kind of like a textured forged finish to it. So very interesting clubs, but as far as I can see, nothing like this in the modern lineup. We should definitely have a closer look. Such a lovely head. I love this muscle back. It looks like the hindquarters of a cheetah, like it's just going to run off. I love this look. Murfield right here in gold. Nice little emblem right here. Jack Nicholas signed. That is how a muscle back should look. And then we have on the sole, McGregor and the club. So eight iron right here. The toe, recognizable, nice step right there. Thin top line, oh my goodness. At a dress, this club is stunning. Eight iron, <laughs> Murfields look great in a dress. And then the face, you can see the person who owned this previously was a great ball striker. I am, <laughs> I don't know if you can see there are some white spots from where I struck the range balls right here. Not quite uh, at the same level as the previous owner. The diamonds all the way down along the grooves right here. Beautiful face, clean. Oh my goodness, I can't even tell you how wonderful this club is to hit. Nice transition here from the shaft to the hosel, which says Tor Forged right here. Obviously the Pro 81 forging. And then the serial number is on the ferrule three rings. Again, I'm not sure if those have yellowed or if those are supposed to be gold, but three gold looking <laughs> stripes right there on the ferrule. Then we move to a stepped shaft that's marked true temper, true temper, dynamic. Maybe something was there, but it's kind of hard to see. And then we have our leather grip. Again, a huge staple of the Jack Nicholas era where he loved his leather grips absolutely beautiful i could look at this club all day such a beautiful stunning love the curves look forging right here we got to get this out and hit this
This iron, amazing. Yes, my first shot was a little left, but my next three, oh, very consistent, beautiful feeling club. Totally, highly recommended. If you like the more straight look, look at the 20th anniversary edition. But for me personally, oh, this curved muscle back, oh, it's so beautiful. Now, for me, when I look at this club, I remember an era when the pros and it seemed like more amateurs really connected with their golf clubs to a point where it was just like, looking at their club was like looking at the back of their hand. It was just a part of their body. So as an eight year old child, I remember watching Jack Nicholas hit his, I didn't watch it live. It was all news and highlight reels for like, it seemed like months, but it was probably just a couple of weeks. He hit his four iron into the 15th and then he sunk his putt. Now put your mind in, <laughs> an eight-year-old's mind. As an eight-year-old, I had been to putt-putt courses. I know how to putt. I thought at the time I had sunk some long putts. And so when I, you watch, you know, Jack Nicholas putt on the 15th, you're like, oh, that was a good putt. But for me, what blew my mind as an eight-year-old was that he used a little tiny butter knife on a stick and he hit that ball 205 yards onto the green over water. And at first I thought it was just magic from the club. I was like, that's amazing, you know? But later on in life, you think, if Seve had his irons, would Seve have cleared the water on 15? If you haven't seen the final broadcast of the 1986 Masters, go to the Masters YouTube channel right now and watch that. Simply amazing. It's Masters weekend right now, so if you're watching that, you know, finish watching the Masters, but maybe on Monday or Tuesday or something, go go to the Masters YouTube channel and check that out. Amazing, uh, strong finish by Jack Nicholas. So, do you remember the era when people would connect with their clubs? It goes all the way back, I don't remember this, but like Bobby Jones with his Calamity Jane and some of the other equipment he had for a long time. Ben Hogan with his driver, how modified it was, and Jack Nicholas with his three wood. Just had that for over a decade. Just had a club that he loved and he was gonna play what he knew would work. Today, I still see that, right? There's still people who really connect with clubs, but there are, it seems like there's a growing population of just consumerism. And I see this in pro shops. People walk in and they're like, oh, I have my old Scotty Cameron from two years ago. I need a new one. Oh, I'll take this Scotty Cameron. Oh, maybe instead of a Scotty Cameron Select, I'll buy a custom shop and then they buy another one the next year. It's just like, are you connecting with these clubs? You're just throwing money at this in this consumerism fashion. Is that really helping your game? And it's funny when I have conversations with people about this. Have you ever connected with some clubs? Oh yeah, oh, I had I had a set of Titleists back three years ago that I really loved. And I'm like, what happened to them? Oh, well, I got a new set. And it's just like, so, okay. Whatever, did they wear out? No, they didn't wear out, but you know, and it's different with pros, you know, your equipment wears out or breaks, you know, replace it. And I think a lot of the manufacturers are pushing that pros replace their clubs every release cycle, every year. So things to look for, do you connect with clubs? Do you have a club that just feels like a part of your body? It's just like, oh, this is look like looking at the back of my hand. For me, I have one Ping Zing Putter. It's not everybody's favorite. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I told you the story before. I'll tell you again. I bought this at a thrift store. I bought my first Ping Zing putter at a thrift store. I used it for a couple years. I bought an Odyssey two ball putter. And I was like, yes, this is the new great thing. It's great for alignment, mallet, putter. And so I gave my Ping Zing to my brother-in-law. Guess what? <laughs> was It was like within a year, like months later, I was like, oh, I'm, I miss my Ping Zing putter. So I went and found another one and bought it, right? It's just like, I connected with this. This club to me is how a putter should look. And it's funny, people give me grief about it sometimes on the golf course, but I, it's whatever, you know, I don't mind because I'm sinking my putts. So Ping Zing, let me know your favorite club. Could be an iron set, could be a set of wedges, a driver, a three wood. I know I've seen people who really love a three wood or a five wood, it's just in their bag. It seems like for decades, so. Looking forward to reading your comments. Definitely, you can also tell me what you think about the Jack Nicholas Murfields. Do you like the 20th anniversary edition more or do you like the 
early 80s Murfield release. And definitely go watch that. Go watch the Masters. It's stunning to watch these pros play. Definitely go to the links in the description below to check out my Amazon golf shop. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.